totally original opener, am I right? Haha. <laughs> I guess all I can really say to start is welcome to a long awaited project of mine that I am dubbing the Free to Play Folly. This has been in the works for quite a while. Now I'm glad it's just kind of coming out now, but obviously, because of this just whole brand new concept, I'm going to explain the rules real quick. So, the idea behind this challenge is you have to start out with nothing, which would make a lot of the battles much more difficult than usual, because normally you would probably have like a sparse area of effect and like have three dancers with like one mage and go ham like that. This, you can't do that. However, if your luck's good, you might be able to. That being said, you can only work with what you got. You cannot reroll. You can't do any of that. Whatever you summon, whatever you do, that's what you have to work with. Once you do start, though, you'll only have one day to complete every abyssal. This can range any time during the active period of the banner. However, once next reset hits, that's game. No more. And if it wasn't too obvious already. You're not allowed to spend any money because it's free to play. However, you're not allowed to register a Nintendo account because it can give you a slight advantage that you wouldn't get by just playing the game normally. However, if you could get resources from Arena or Aetherase, by all means, go ahead. Anything that you can do in the game itself is fair game. And then finally, if you could beat every Abyssal before next reset, then you win. Simple as that. But yeah, let's get started then. Alright, so we got the tutorial ready to go. It's only a few maps, just learn how to... T if you don't know how to play, now you know how to play, and it's pretty much as simple as that. Nothing more, nothing less. Now that we have access to the actual game, I figured it would be best to see what I actually start with. Just a simple scroll through my inventory, and I can already see I basically have nothing. I don't have any codes, I don't have any stamina pots, I pretty... I, it's a blank slate. So what we can do is, as we don't have an infinite amount of stamina to work with, we're going to need to play more safely, so that we can make the most out of what we have available. But first... There you go. The biggest question when it came to summoning was, who am I going to pick as the free picks? Or who am I going to choose as my free picks? I ultimately went with Brave Camilla and Brave Lysithia. It's already in Camilla's favor that half of the CYL3 units are pretty mediocre, and while I could have gone with Micaiah because she has that cav and armor effectiveness, I knew that ultimately it would not be enough in the like in the abyssals with all the HP stacking. Uh, moreover, Camilla comes with attack tactic in her uh, kit, which means I have direct access to buffing my allies. This is going to be, or at least I figured this would be very important, especially when fodder is not really in at my available disposal. And then as for Brave Lysithia, all the four picks were very, very solid. I almost went with Brave Claude because we do get a free Takumi, which means he can easily make use of a close counter noontime, which means he has consistent healing, which would be really, really good against hard picks like um, Bramimund, but the only problem I had is due to the lack of seals and resources to get such seals, we couldn't use Iot on his seal, which means he's way more prone to unit types than arguably any of the other three. Brave Dimitri would have also been a nice pick because he also comes with a built-in distant counter so he doesn't have to worry about counterattacking. The only problem I definitely foresaw was Again, also just with the inflation in stats. The amount of damage reduction he would receive from Blue Lion's roll could ultimately be kind of moot at the end of the day, especially with uh, all the stat inflation, so I wasn't very confident that he would be able to perform well in the Abyssals. And then we had Brave Edelgard, and there's really not much to say. She's a two-move armor, but she doesn't get damage reduction until the second hit, and while she does have consistent healing, the problem more in lies with the fact that she can't attack regardless of the foe's range, unless it's a mage or a staff. And personally, I'd rather take a two range unit rather than a one range unit because I have more wiggle room overall. But no, I figured Brave Lysithia would be the safest pick due to that. 
So with that, she can stack attack even more with Brave Canola's attack tactic, and then the other two, what I figured out later, were probably just going to be Peony and Reagan, because throughout all my summons, I was not able to get any dancers I needed whatsoever. I didn't even need a 5-star dancer, I just needed an Olivia or a Sylvia, any one of the two. But all my pulls from the first summoning batch were really, really mediocre. And this ultimately puts me in a bind when it comes to fodder. So naturally, after you get all of the summons done, we now have to train our units. I, before I went and gone for Peony and Reagan, I did have to do the other tutorial maps, which weren't too bad. It was just more orbs, uh, didn't really take up any stamina. But after that, I was able to go to way more other places because if I didn't do those, then they'd still be locked. What I ultimately planned to do first was snag two blessings because as I train Lysithia and Brave Camilla, they can get double SP from them, which was very important for getting in and getting out as quickly as possible. I was able to beat Celica's normal difficulty with Takumi. I was able to get my first two blessings, which were the only ones I really needed. At that point, I was able to go into the story maps and get more orbs while simultaneously leveling up and getting more SP in the process. I also went into the tactic drills so I can get more feathers, which meant I was able to possibly promote Takumi and give Lysithia a close counter, albeit it doesn't ever really come in handy because her bulk's way too low, which is unfortunate, but at the time I figured it would be much more useful. After that, I went to the former halls, I took, I went up to chamber 5 and snagged a few more orbs, one from the login bonus and then a couple from the actual chamber completions. That meant I could continue to summon later down the road as I completely passed on the Hero Fest banner entirely. I currently waiting until I have enough more, I have more orbs stockpiled so I can keep going in there. Beyond that, I just did the Erica Bound Hero Battle so I could get more orbs. I went to Aether Raids, Forfeit, got all that done. And I went into the Code and Grail shop because you get a bunch of codes and you get a couple grails for free. So what I ultimately ended up doing was taking the hero's path because ultimately due to the diversity of the team, I can safely get speed tactic and attack tactic ready on my Scythia. And then beyond that, it was just saving for orbs and then going through going through the story. Not too much to say here, I went and got, got Peony and I went and got Reagan, which meant now I could start training them. <laughs> you know I needed to get the sunglasses. <laughs> And then your standard affair, I got all four units, which meant I went to go grind in the story maps. What also helped was, because I was doing some of the story maps, I was able to get some rewards from the Heroes Path, which gave me some more stamina pots, which meant I can go into, into the special maps and grind over there. That allowed me to go train my units way faster, get more SP. Ultimately, this was going to be the biggest grind of the entire session, as leveling units from 1 to 40 without any crystals would take up way more time. But thankfully, we did have the XP bonus along with the blessings, which meant I was able to get in and get out as quickly as possible. However, because of all the inheritance I gave each of my units, I needed more SP in the long run, so that took up way more time too. And before I decided to go and head into the Infernos and the Abyssals, I figured I would get a couple more summoning sessions in, and due to the exuberant rate of the Hero Fest and who's on focus, I figured that would be the best banner to summon on. The Legendary Heroes banner isn't necessarily bad, but the fact of the matter is that I'm basically sniping for three units on each color, and a good amount of the colors don't offer me anything I necessarily need. Meanwhile, on the Hero Fest banner, you have Nagi, Dual Ephraim, and Bernadetta. All who have decent amount of fodder to work with. This session went way better than the previous one. I was able to snag a few copies of Nagi, which I really didn't need more than one, because all she really has is distant counter. And I can't use special fighter on, on any of my units, unfortunately. I was able to get a dual Ephron, which was also great, 
I ultimately gave that to Reagan, even though she has speed defense, because I felt that if I'm going to be giving her disencounter, she needs to be able to take some hits. And I figured with what inheritance I have going, I can give her soul and disencounter from Nagi, so she can at least heal during the enemy phase. And then attack defense lull from Ephraim so she doesn't die as quickly. Meanwhile, I was also able to pull a Fallen Marita, which was way more surprising. That was really surprising. Now, the biggest factor I had here was whether or not I was going to get Lysithia Null Follow-Up or Flashing Blade 4, and ultimately I ended up going with Null Follow-Up and Luna because I never saw a need to... I never saw a need where I'm going to be depending on Luna procs. But once I was able to get all this fodder, train up everybody, get all their SP going, I was pretty much ready to go. And I, at that point, I pretty much started attempting the Infernos and the Abyssals. Duma's map by far was going to be the map I would be able to work with the most, given that there's a complete barrier between half of the map, whether that's the giant amount of lava pools that I couldn't cross and most of the enemies on this map couldn't cross either, or the wall above. Which meant if I was able to clear out all of the left side of the map before Duma and all the other enemies were able to catch up, I would be able to safely plonk a lot of my units along over there and then snipe and dance as needed. And ultimately that worked out in the Infernal map tremendously. I had almost no issues with that whatsoever. However, what came after was the HP inflation, which was way tougher to, <laughs> to say the least. For starters, now that all these enemies have a lot more HP, I had to carefully make- I had to make sure I was able to safely take them out before either of my units were able to get sniped. And thankfully, because of Kanto, I was able to securely move around my units across the map as much as I needed to. On top of the fact that Soul with Disencounter, more, more so Soul than actual Disencounter, was able to put me in a position where I can safely initiate and tank with Reagan. Even with Brave Camilla alongside, she wouldn't always be in range to take or heal, which meant I was way more dependent on Reagan on this map than pretty much every other map. But afterwards, I was able to get into a safe position where I was able to position my Lysithia alongside all these enemies and just go and take them out. It wasn't as hard at that point. Heal up, dance, move back, the whole shebang. And after a lot of trial and error, I was able to complete both the Infernal and the Abyssal. SUCCESS! Now moving on to Legendary Celicas, one of the bigger worries were definitely the enemies coming from below, as every turn we would get more and more, whether that was a Lance Flyer, that was a Bow Flyer. By mitigating the amount of units in the front, we were able to safely deal with the ones in the back while staying in a position where most units that would be able to take out any of our units that we currently have was not possible. However, a lot of the problems that we would end up going through along the trial and error period was trying to bait out and deal with a majority of these units. Because the problem was if we didn't deal with a certain amount of units by the time Celica started moving, we would ultimately get too surrounded and not be able to beat the map. On top of the fact that Celica also has a miracle, which meant if we could not deal enough damage, or if we weren't able to take a hit from her, then we would also be in a position where we would not be able to do anything about her. Fortunately, what we were able to do was attack with Reagan, as her Kanto allowed her three move, and her Kanto came in handy for that, and then finish her off with Brave Lysithia. However, the other problem came into the fact that now we have to just carefully move out all these units, but at this point it just became easy pickings. Reagan would pick off some of the mages and the calves, and then Brave Lysithia for the armors and so and so. But yeah, after a lot of trial and error, again we were able to just take out every single unit. However, this is where the Abyssals became way more difficult than anticipated. SUCCESS! 
If you remember earlier, I told you that a lot of the problem that stemmed from the abyssals were the stat inflations, and this was no different in Brammy Men's map. While the Infernal was workable with a lot of the strats of moving around Lysithia and taking out whatever she could with her desperation and her high attack and speed, a lot of the problems ultimately became the fact that we were just getting way too surrounded and we didn't have a much we didn't have enough leg room to deal with a majority of these units. So a lot of the strats that came in from the Inferno were mostly with Camilla, as her gravity staff was able to prevent a lot of the foes from moving and surrounding us way quicker. However, that being said, we also used the Reagan to our advantage because of her Canto and Distant Counter, meaning she can take on both the Dagger and the Axe unit at the top left. Reagan's were ultimately came down to making sure that by the time we have to retreat, there won't be any units left there so we can safely move around and take out units. This is the point where we are able to take out whatever units were coming our way. And thankfully, because of the low move on the Lance Knight, we are able to move back and forth with ease, meaning we could take out Bramley Men, we could take out the Dagger unit, and then ultimately we were able to pick off the armor in the end and complete the Infernal which was more than I was expecting to do on this map. However, after that point, it all went downhill. Bramimund is already one of those units that you would think is going to ruin your run because of how ridiculously powerful he is. Now take that, just take that logic, and then give him a bunch of inflated stats. It's way, it gets to the point where it's way too much. Nothing I was able to do in this map allowed me to take on most of the units and secure the win in the same way I did it in the Infernal because because of the HP inflation we were barely making it by with a lot of the kills. That even came in with the first turn with the healer where the only reason we were able to kill her is because I was able to use my Grails and summon up Runya for Res Smoke. Which did come in handy for a lot of the Infernals to say the least, but the problem now became not even with the amount of units on the screen, it just became the amount of leg room that we have in the end, because there isn't an issue with taking out most of these units, except for Bramingman. The problem is that we don't have a lot of room to work with, especially now that there's two especially now that we have all this HP inflation. We weren't able to secure as many kills as before. Which meant we really we couldn't complete this map. By the end, I was able to try and replicate the strat, but ultimately in the end, there was way too much HP on either of the foes, even with Bramiment. I couldn't use Null Follow-Up because Lysithia can't take any hits. At that point, it was pretty much worthless on her. It didn't help that she was also using Push, which meant her HP continued to get lower and lower by the combat. And in the end, it was just way too much. Failure. Similarly with Plumeria's map, we didn't have as much- we had a good amount of legroom to start with, but by the time turn 2 and turn 3 hit, we would get spawns- uh, we would ultimately get more spawns in the starting positions, which meant we had to prioritize those, and given the fact that a lot of cavs spawned from the top and Plumeria's a dancer, it meant it was harder to avoid combat from units that would ultimately result in a game over. What also came in handy again was the distant counter from Reagan, as I was able to bait out some of the mages on the side and take care of those. But what was entirely important in the first turn is taking out Plumeria. Without that, we would not be able to get into a position where we can securely take care of the rest of the units. Which was great because as Reagan has Kanto, it meant we were able to work around a lot of the obstacles. However, one of the units on the map that would require pretty much every single unit we had was the Blue Mage at the start of the turn one because it has Triangle Adept. And fun fact, red isn't good against blue, especially with Triangle Adept. Uh, yeah, best of luck. However, from a lot of the playtests in two, I was able to get the Green Flying, uh, green flying Dragon into a position where it would keep repositioning a lot of the units, or it would keep repositioning the blue mage, which meant I still had a bit more wiggle room to work with. 
Two of the biggest units we had to take out from this map were the Blue Mage and Plumeria. Plumeria, obviously, because of her dance, but secondly, the Blue Mage had Triangle with up, which meant we were not able to focus on the rest of the units until we were able to securely deal with a majority of these units. So on that note, I decided to go on to the, uh, the rightmost side, take out Plumeria, use Cancer to go back, and barely take a hit from the Blue Mage. And thankfully, we were able to go and heal because of the initial hit, and we got a decent amount back from Soul to where we could take out the Green Dragon. At this point, it was just a lot of easy pickings, heal up Lysithia so uh, she could take a hit from one of the calves, and just carefully position and sweep, and that's pretty much it for the Infernal. Now, the fun part is... We have no method of taking out the Blue Mage securely. Even Plumeria aside, the biggest issue is going to be the Blue Mage, and it was the Blue Mage. Triangle of Death with HP Inflation, with no units that were able to take out that Blue Mage specifically, even with all our units aside, we were not able to do anything against it. And on top of the fact that we had more, we had other units to deal with who all had HP inflation. It eventually got to the point where it just got way too overwhelming on the map to the point where we were also not able to complete the the abyssal. Failure. And finally, we had legendary Lilina, who, on the surface, didn't really look like the most bulky unit, especially around Reagan. But the problem that ultimately came about was actually being able to securely take her out and move back. Because in the beginning of the first turn, we were not in a position where we were able to reach Lalina and retreat back without losing a unit. However, given the Infernal difficulty, we were able to take out a lot of units with Lysithia and Reagan, move back, make use of a lot of the walls and areas within, as well as what I would say the MVP weapon of the map was Camilla's gravity staff again because with all the cabs and the flyers we were able to make sure they could not move as much as they are usually able to because that's how I yeah yeah I mean that's how gravity works. So what we were able to do in the end was take out Lolina with Reagan and securely position everybody due to the nature of gravity. And once again we were not able to do much on this part either because, you guessed it, HP inflation. You gotta love it. One of the bigger problems now is we can't even take out the armor axe knight with Lysithia on the first turn. This is, even with no follow-up in mind, we're ultimately giving up something that would help Lysithia give up, uh, deal more damage. Which is what we needed to do, especially now that everything is going to be pretty much Okoing every single one of our units. Reagan isn't even the most bulky. Lysithia and Camille and Peony are obviously not bulky in the slightest. And the damage reduction from Reagan only comes in handy when she's initiating. And right now we're not in a position where we can we can safely initiate. On top of the fact that we also have to deal with the Dragon Red Flyer, as now we can't abuse tactics, which meant we are pretty much screwed in terms of damage dealing capabilities to the point where not only could we not safely take out a majority of these units without several hits, it got to the point where it wasn't we couldn't do enough to where we could safely move around. And that ultimately led us to getting even more cornered in the rightmost side. And that basically cost us the entire abyssal. There was nothing we could do at this point. I would argue that the amount of space we had to work with was way less than before, especially on Grimy Men's map, but yet we could not complete the Abyssal. Failure. And to end things off, we got a final tally of what we were able to do. We were able to take out all the Infernals, which was really great on its own, especially with what we had to work with. Maybe I just wasn't playing smart either. <laughs> um, but no, I'm at least happy that we were able to do at least all of the Infernals. And while we couldn't do every Abyssal to its full completion within the day, we were able to still take out Duma and Selka. And I would say that's still pretty impressive as is. 
Now, what I might need to think of for potentially next time is probably the free units I pick. On top of what units I pick for free, what banners I prioritize my orbs. As every month, we're going to be getting new banners. We're going to be getting... It's not just going to be the Hero Fest at that point, which means we get a lot more options every month. And I guess for closing thoughts, this was an idea in the works for, I would say, a good, good while. It's something that I think brings a new twist to the game itself. Because normally you can just... If you play for at most a month, you can have a decent mage with three dancers ready to go, and then you can just spiral spam and call it a day. But now that, but if you're just doing it from day one to the end of day one, your options are way more limited, especially since you don't have the materials to get seals that would mostly benefit the units, not necessarily the the squad assaults. But even then, the squad assaults require five teams, and we barely had enough units to make one decent team. And those were the ones we got for free, so there's <laughs> not much we could do there. But no, this was definitely way more experimental, and this took way more time than I thought it would take to get this ready to go. And even then, I'm still not very sure, I'm not very confident that this is how I want the final product to be at the end of this video. So what I would really, really appreciate is if you could leave me feedback. What did you like? What didn't you like? Would you prefer this in a live stream format? Granted, I don't know if I can do it that way, but I think given the nature of the quote unquote game mode, I feel like this benefits way more from a live streaming perspective rather than a video format. But even then, I still think it's rather interesting. No, I think it's interesting to take the video approach anyway, as we are able to pretty much analyze the potential ability. And I think the video format serves as more of an educational and interesting piece rather than one of those enter well, quote unquote entertainment pieces. But no, I want feedback. I think this is something that could have a lot of potential overall. But even from the inside, I can tell this still needs a lot of work. So yes, just let me know what you think worked, what didn't work, what you want to see, what you don't really want to see. If you want other people to get involved, if you want it in a more quick format, just anything you feel that, anything that you would think would benefit this overall, I would love to hear. But yeah, I, <laughs> this is all I could do. Um, but I had, it was really fun, honestly. It's not something I never really saw anywhere before, so I do. I probably will try this again at the end of the next month. Now, if I'm able to get the video out as soon as possible, we'll see about that because this is a pretty hefty project. But yeah, thank you for watching. I really, really, really appreciate it. And bye bye